Hey, it's JP here on the Mix Morning Grind. We got a very special guest joining us this morning, straight off of Canada's Got Talent, Melanie Dodore. Melanie, how are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me and bringing me on to share my journey. Well, you have quite the journey. So let's kind of go back before we get to Canada's Got Talent and your your journey through that. Uh, let's go back to to your upbringing and where you're from and how you kind of came into this entertainment space. Okay, well, I grew up in Edmonton, um, and in 2005, I moved to Fort Saskatchewan, and Fort Saskatchewan has been my home since then. Um, I'm a music teacher in the fort, actually. I teach all the little humans music, um, and I also teach violin here. So uh, I have my hand in the arts here in our community. Definitely, and the violin plays a very important part in your life, obviously from the teaching side of things, but also when it comes to your performance art, it really is something unique and spectacular, and I've described it here on, on the show, talking about you and your appearance. I want to hear you describe it because it's aerial along with violin, but you do it in such a way that it's incredibly unique. So how would you describe it to someone who hasn't seen you before? Um, well, I'm uh, Canada's first aerial fabric violinist. So what that means is that you'll hear hopefully some of your favorite music um, and then you'll be visually entertained as I'm flipping and moving through all this different fabric and you won't kind of know what to expect next. And it's just something that's very different for your eyes and a way for you to experience music a little bit differently. Well, definitely. And I, I know a number of people who've seen you perform live and they, they say it's mesmerizing, which I, I'd imagine is a pretty cool thing to have people just kind of lost in a trance watching you perform and even watching a video of you, Melanie, it it's very um, pleasing to the eye because you're trying to figure out what's going on, but it's kind of beautiful at the same time. Do you, it, what was the, the start of putting the act together? I would imagine maybe uh, you were interested in doing both of these things separately and then blended them together. How did it all come about? You're very clever. <laughs> <laughs> um, absolutely. Yeah. I've been playing violin since I was three. And of course I've been doing aerial arts for a really long time. And I actually started aerial arts because I was scared of heights and I wanted to try to get over my fear of heights. Um, That's what that I really did. <laughs> it really hasn't helped very much, but um, now I have something to hold on to, so it's all right. Um, but uh, it was um, right before COVID, actually, a uh, year and some before COVID, I was searching on YouTube for music for an aerial routine. And in front of me popped a lady named Janice Martin. And I believe it's really important to pay homage to those who come before you. And Janice Martin was the world's first aerial violinist. And I saw her playing in a cube over the symphony. And that moment was so defining for me because I just realized, oh my my goodness, these are my two favorite things in the world. Why shouldn't we put them together? Why shouldn't we offer the audience something different? And so that's kind of where it all began. And then I started searching to see if there was anybody that could be a mentor for me. And there wasn't anybody doing aerial silks playing violin in Canada. So um, I flew to Montreal to a circus school to, um, to do a little bit of training. And then I came back and I've just started this journey on my own. And it's pretty exciting. So where, where do you tend to perform? I know that you do a lot of weddings. You do a lot of uh, special events like that. Uh, is there a certain event that you you really like doing that kind of brings out uh, the best in your act? I'd imagine a wedding somewhere where kind of love is in the air and beautiful things are all around. Yeah. That's probably yeah. a big one, right? Yeah, I think my favorites probably are I love doing cocktail parties. Um, I love when people are coming in and everybody's chatting and then there's somebody hanging from the ceiling and it's just so <laughs> interesting. Um, I can also in my apparatus, I can also pour drinks for people <laughs> so I can have a little something different too. Oh, but um, yeah, you can bark too at the same time. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's just something, those are my favorites to do. Um, my dream would one day to be able to play with pink. <laughs> she could be in the sky and I could, that would be like an amazing dream come true. But right. um, till, till then I just want to be able to just share my art and do what I enjoy doing. Yeah. Is there ever, because you've been doing this for a long time, is there ever a little bit of fear that goes into doing the silks? Because I just, when I watch people do it, I, I know that you have the right training to mm -hmm. like make this all work. Yeah. But at the <laughs> same time, there's a lot of room for error there, isn't there? Yeah, <laughs> there is. But you know, to be honest, you um, when I'm doing it with a violin, I'm choosing moves that um, that allow me to move with my instrument. So when I actually get to perform without my instrument, my vocabulary is very different because right. I can navigate through things through the tighter spots a little bit easier. 
Um, sure. I think when I'm performing, the the most difficult and probably one that gives me the most anxiety is my bow falling because it's attached to my violin, um, okay. but it's just attached with like a little clip. So if the bow hits the fabric in the wrong way and it falls, then th- th- that's what happens. <laughs> so the act that's comes to an abrupt what, end. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's that's what causes me that probably a little bit of um, hold your breath moments, but that that's about it. Other than that, I, I generally play in positions I feel very safe in. Now, before we get into the Canada's Got Talent side of things, is there a favorite song that you like to perform, Melanie? Oh yes, I do. Um, I my favorite song um, is "Mad Vulgar" by Gordon Stobie. He's a Canadian composer, um, and he wrote a piece that sounds very Eastern European. And I love that scale. I love that sound, that nuance, and um, I love celebrating Canadian composers. So awesome. for me, that's definitely my favorite. And then um, I found generally that people respond the most to different pop music, things that are that they can sing. Yeah. Um, for festivals, I do like to kind of take it up a little bit and I'll do a little bit of looping myself where I create everything on the ground and then I add it and I choreograph to it in, in the sky. So that that's something that's kind of special for music festivals. Awesome. Now, speaking of, you know, Canadian composers and Canadian talent, Canada's got talent. You, you <laughs> made your check uh, through that show uh, to that stage. Uh, tell us uh, about the process and how, I guess you, you auditioned in the first place and and went from there? Yeah, crazy. So I was getting messages from people who had um, who had seen the advertisements on social media that they were taking auditions. And because of COVID, we were in the heart of COVID at that time, um, auditions were very different. So you had to submit a video, but once you did, um, you were under contract not to say anything. So I had to keep this enormous secret um, and hold it very close and dear to my heart for a very long time. So once you submit um, a video, then um, it's not guaranteed you'll get a call, but I got a call right away. um, And they said, you know, we'd, we'd like to hear more from you. And so you do more Zoom interviews and you do that whole process and they see if you would be a good fit for the live auditions on the show. Um, And and my journey took me there, which was really, really exciting. So in November, um, that's when we flew there for those live editions. So I've had to keep this in my heart <laughs> since November. It's, it's so hard. So what's, yes, the, what's, so the, what's, what's the reaction been from, from friends and family so far? You know what? So, so much supportive. Um, I went there just wanting to share my journey and to uh, just to inspire little humans. There's no limits to what they can do with their music. So um, no matter what the outcome, I think a lot of the little kids have have thought it's pretty cool to see their teacher on TV. Um, And really, you know, as a mom of two, my kids, um, I think, really, really saw their mom being brave and being a risk taker. And I think that that's something really important that they saw from this. So. Totally. And I, I think, as you were mentioning earlier in the interview, too, how you're not seeing someone in every city do this kind of act. You are the first in Canada to be doing it. So it's something different that I'm sure I guarantee you that at least somebody watched and thought, oh, I need to learn how to do that. Right. So it's got to kind of be cool to be a trailblazer that way. It's kind of what you hope for. Right. I just hope right. that, you know, that it will inspire people to to do something different with their music and um, you know, to be honest, Justin, we grew up in it. Well, I grew up in a time where there wasn't social media. So you really, the journey that you had was what your teacher had or what was close to you. But mm-hmm. now, you know, with like platforms like Canada's Got Talent, really like kids can be watching and they can be seeing people do such amazing things and we'll just keep upping the bar. So right. even if my journey didn't go, you know, the way that I had totally wanted, um, I hope that somebody will have seen this and then their journey will change. Absolutely. Melanie, anything else coming up in the near future uh, that you're excited about? Uh, What's next for you? Well, there's a whole bunch of summer festivals coming up and um, we have some amazing circus arts festivals in Edmonton. So I'm hoping that people will check that out. And really, I'm just, uh, you know, I'm just happy just to be playing locally. So, you know, throw anything my way. I just love to play. (laughs) We're at Saskatchewan's own Melanie Dodore. Melanie, thank you so much for taking the time today. Congratulations on all your success. And uh, you've been a big inspiration to a lot of folks. We're really looking forward uh, to seeing what's next from you. Oh, Justin, thanks for having me. You're the best. <laughs>